Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 46. Today, we're going to talk about Jonathan. So his background, how he got to where he is, and why he loves WordPress so much. <laughs> Take it away, Jonathan. Tell us about your humble beginnings in England. In what town in England? Um, basically, uh, I was brought up in the suburbs of northeast London, um, in suburbia. Um, I, I, my father owned uh, a couple small retail businesses in dry cleaning, and I used to help him out. Um, and then he sold those businesses, and we moved out further into the countryside that surrounds London. And we moved near a, um, a town, a city, a small city that's called Chelmsford in the county of Essex. And we moved there when I was about 17. And uh, I was just working for somebody in dry cleaning as a kind of assistant manager. And with my with a with the bit of help from my father, well, um, he, um, he was a guarantee of a loan, and I also had saved some money myself. Um, I bought I bought existing run down dry cleaning business when I was about um, I think twenty three twenty four, and um, I run that for over twenty years and. I had a partner, an investor, and we built it up um, in a business where uh, we had six locations. But I didn't have all the equity in the business. I only had about 30%. And when I sold, when we sold the business, the bulk of the, um, I, I got, um, I, you know, I didn't make, well, you know, I got my fair share, but, you know, the bulk of it went into my investor. Right. He had the equity. Well, so, you, yeah, know, you, you probably learned a lesson from that. that you want to keep as much equity as possible in a business, especially if you're putting all the labor in. Uh, yeah, but he invested quite a bit of money. So it was my business decision, wasn't it? Okay. So dry cleaning to WordPress. How did you get there? And how did the dry cleaning business help you make amazing WordPress sites? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it, well, it gave, I think it's given me a perspective um, about what a small business should be, you know, small, medium business should really be looking from their website. Um, I think it gave me that. Um, basically, the deal was that um, I got into technology because I also suffer from dyslexia and I got into technology in a way to help me with my dyslexia. Um, and I got my first computer around 1998, 99, and um, I just really got interested in in it. Um, well, it's probably a bit earlier because basically I, I did a degree, but it wasn't um, when I did my degree as a mature student. Um, the course I did, there was there wasn't the internet. Um, they were doing CD-ROM production, actually. Um, it was using a program from uh, a company that people in the industry would recognise, a company called Macromedia. And they were a company that originally developed Dreamweaver, um, Fireworks, and also their premier program was a program called Director, which was a multimedia CD-ROM developing program. And um, I went. I joined this university course, and it was a load of. Um, it was a mixture of three D, which I really didn't wasn't interested in, and director, and a a load of Visual Basic. You know, a, a, a bit of JavaScript, but a ton of Visual Basic programming, which I didn't enjoy either. And then, that, and then they follow. Then they kind of um, did a bit of graphics as well. Um, and they all kind of threw it in, and they called it multimedia computing, Bill. Multimedia computing. That was in school. What school was that in England? That was at a university, University of um, uh, the University of 
Ruskin. They renamed it actually. It's called Ruskin. Ruskin University. Ruskin University in England. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. And um, I did it as I was running my business. Um, but I did it as a full time student because I really wasn't prepared to take the fight, the four to four and a half years that it takes to do a part time course. And if you're full time, it takes three years in England. And the university was about, um, I would say, about 500 yards from our main business. So um, it was fine until the last year where I had to do the dissertation. Um, it was a real mess of a course. The, I, uh, I realised with, re with reflection that the a lot of the lecturers really didn't. It was really, but I've been a bit unfair to them because it was such a new... Um, it was a really new kind of frontier, you know, multimedia, CD production. There was a couple of art colleges in London that I probably would have been better off going to, but the distance would have, I couldn't have run my business um, and done that. Um, so I basically did that, but then, um, and I, I did, a, I dabbled in, in in that um but i really concentrated on running my and building the my main business up and then that i think that was that was around 1994 between 94 and 97 and then i got out and dabbled and didn't do a lot with it but then the internet reared its head between 97 and 99 and i did a bit of flash work that's that's how i got into the internet actually you doing flash doing a bit of action scripting and the cd rom thing was dying out bill but the actual uh, mechanics kind of transferred to doing kind of flash work on the internet bill mm -hmm. yeah so i did a bit of that i did a, a dabbled in that a bit you know doing kind of weekends and that doing kind of contract work for people yep so anyway driving on that, you gotta yeah. go forward. How do we get into? How do we get in the United States? How do we get to where we are today? I know the last seven years <laughs> you've been hard and heavy. Well, I got, and then and then we had the. Um, <coughs> I was doing the. I was doing this flash work, and it was actually building up actually, um, to the stage where <coughs> I really didn't. You know, I was working in my business plus doing this, and it got to the stage where it was getting a bit too much, but then the dot com collapsed in 2000, 2001 it just collapsed uh, no it was the end, around 2000 and really the work just dried up it totally dried up any kind of between 2000 and 202 there really wasn't much going on um in london around contracting you know no that people people just thought the internet was finished <laughs> no, re, on re, re, reflection, that's ridiculous. You do need a bit of luck in things, though. Um, so I just concentrated on my business. I met my ex-wife, who was an American citizen and in London, and um, we got married. And um, she wanted to move back to America. Um, I I had got tired of dry cleaning. I've been doing it for 20 years. Um me and my partner um, were having some arguments. We've been, you know, he had been a kind of quasar silent investor. Um, it, it was time to part ways. It was time to move on. So um, my ex-wife had family in Sacramento, um, but we had been to this area we live in, we I uh, still do, and we both do, Bill, don't we? We live in northern Nevada. And um, we've been skiing here, and it's, um, so we decided to settle in this area, Bill. And I thought, what should I do? Um, and I wanted to take a break because I was a bit burnt out. So I decided to do a two-year associate degree at the Western Community College in Nevada, Bill. So you got your experience there. And I know that that was, you probably didn't need to do that. You focus, did you? Get, well, 
I felt it was more graphic focused than um, I, for about three or four years. I hadn't really um, done much in the web thing after the dot com um, fiasco. I kind of turned my back on. I, I I just concentrated on my business. So for about four or five years, for about four years, I really hadn't done much. You know, you know. And by that time, Flash would no longer be used. And I thought I just needed to kind of um, sh sharpen my skills up. Um, and I think it did It did what it was supposed to do. Um, and I did do a little bit of part-time work helping clients as I was doing the degree. Um, but then when I got out, that's when the recession really hit in northern Nevada. You know, it was... Um, it was a major center of the property bubble that was happening in Southern and the Bay Area. A lot of that bubble had moved into Northern Nevada and there was a major property bubble and that burst around the end of 2007 and the beginning of 2008, Bill. Right, right. Um, and um, I got out from college about halfway or the end of 2008. And I, I, I was looking, it was really hard, hard to see. And then I, I kind of stumbled, um, I, uh, when I was work, when I was studying in college here, I did a few websites and I, I did them. I was looking at a couple of content management systems. I was looking at one called Joomla and I was looking at one that I had done some work in Britain with called Expression Engine. And um, I didn't really like either. <laughs> and I certainly didn't like Joomla. Um, I liked Expression Engine a little bit better, but both weren't particularly that easy to use. And they weren't easy to teach clients how to use them, Bill. So I was looking, at, I was looking for something a bit easier, and that's how I stumbled into... Um, WordPress into WordPress, the crazy, word. and it was around, it was around the end of two o eight, two o two o nine. So it was version, it was around version two point nine, three point o that I got into WordPress. It was when they sorted out the menu system, and also they introduced custom post types, Bill. Um, which made made WordPress a much more um, a, well with custom post types in the menu system. It made it into a full fledged content management system rather than just being treated as a kind of blogging platform. Bill, right? And I got into that, and it was a bit of a learning curve because I only been dabbling in Joomla. And finding it a pr bit of a nightmare, and and as you do, Bill, which you have learnt yourself, um, you get sucked into WordPress, don't you? And is it endless? You do, and it's huge. It reminds me of Microsoft programming or something. It's just amazing. You know, I was just looking at something, and I know it stopped reflect it was long as we're talking about WordPress. Uh, when you're recalling back, uh, 2005. See, I was you know I was a reservist in between deployments. 2005 to five six. Someone there. I uh, I was starting to make my own WordPress sites for other folks and helping them, and mostly in politics. And I was using Dreamweaver. Mm -hmm. I went back on Dreamweaver the other day. I said, "We did this. You know, we put in HTML, and, like make little squares, and they'd be buttons, and pretty it's ridic pretty it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, WordPress is so much easier than that was. That was good for making just nice pictures and HTMLs, I guess. Vi visual graphics with buttons, but it was it was not well, anything what WordPress is. Well, you. you I haven't used it for a long time, but I understand it. It really, um, for Moulton, who's on our panel, he does some courses of using Dreamweaver. Uh -huh. Well, I think he does. I, I, I shouldn't say that, but I, I've they, it has integration with WordPress in Dreamweaver. It, but, it does? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you can make like a page, I guess. Well, you, you, page. you can use the functions and some of the template elements. And Great code. Be, yeah. Um, so, the, but I haven't used it for quite a while, Bill. Um, um, I use Sublime Text um, or Coda. I kind of 
oscillate between Coda and Sublime Text. They're both um, text editor, developer, stroke developer interfaces. Um, that's what I tend to use as my as my main. But I could, could never make my mind up because there's bits about Coda I like, and then there's bits about Sublime I like. So anyway, going on, we got we got about twenty minutes. Uh, twenty minutes. We have about seven minutes left. Oh, so we're now, gonna go on now. Now in your WordPress, you got a yeah. business. You're in Reno, having a great time. I would say a great time. Get, Bill. get divorced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get divorced. Was a great Bill. <laughs> and so, what happened? To do your WordPress business between the time you're divorced and now? Well, I, I just, uh, I've just concentrated on small business, but I, I, I um, it's a small market here. It's very close, very person related. Yeah. Um, but quite truthful, it's nothing unusual. When I was going through my divorce, it took up all my time, the legal side, the emotional. I kind of got a bit depressed about it. I went back to the UK actually for six months um, after the divorce was official just to try and, you know, be with my family. And then I decided to come back. It's been oh, it's now we're in 205, so it's been two and a half years now. I can't believe it actually. Um, it's more like free, but um, you know that for the past year I've been very heavily involved in building my SaaS. Right, and the SaaS is pretty amazing. This last year, we go more detail. I know you're still still working out, still creating, still managing some WordPress sites. You have a few new clients. But I'll tell you what, the SaaS. I've watched your journey in SaaS, uh, specifically the last six months, maybe longer when you started uh, laying it out. I know you presented at uh, One Million Cups, which is part of the Kauffman Institute, about yeah. the product. It's a I've seen it grow. It's it's definitely an interesting product. Uh, calendar content development, publishing yeah. to uh, both um, uh, Twitter and Facebook, and the and on that we you know Facebook business sites, whatever you want to do. And we've gone into um, talk talked to, well, you went with real estate agents, working looking a little bit at other industries too, but primarily focusing on real estate initially and really now niching down in, in with the brokers with the yeah, product. The, the, I think there's a market now and I think actually it's going to be agents and brokers that's going to be taking up a fair bit of my time for the mm-hmm. next eight, nine years. Um, but you know you know what? We Yesterday we went with a broker and, and driving on on your stuff. This is a good point I think to talk about is the broker – who had the sales agents. He, he's a broker with about 60 sales agents in town. And he's got a pretty good technology uh, director in his yes. little organization. He's, is, in fact, he's got an excellent technology director. Yeah, he has, which is unusual, but it's really important. And he's been there 12 years. That's what's unusual. The same person has been running yeah. this technology. And he's, and he's done well. And I like his size, like his office. But what I was going to say, though, he, he said something that's real critical, and I think this is so true. Of all your agents out there, there's only a small number who really will apply technology. And he said, build databases and develop those client bases. And that's what he beats them on the head. So he, as a broker, has to figure out ways using your product to get people to do the work. And it's funny. I, I just had to laugh. It's going a little sidetrack from you. Is his technology person said, you know, you got some way that we can like uh, get all our all their passwords so they can only log in once. I guess he was talking about using just Facebook, getting them to all use Facebook because you've got about six different elements there you have to log into or have access to from yeah. Facebook, YouTube, Google Plus, um, any type of stuff they have in the office. And he said the agents are always forgetting their passwords or screwing them up or something. I thought that was funny. That was one of his big concerns from the office. Yeah, uh, I can understand it. But to get back to WordPress, um, I think you know you were asking me questions about WordPress, but I I, I, I think its great strengths are its community and also the word mm-hmm. the meetups. I think the meetups have and the been, WordPress camps and the w- WordPress camps and the meetups they've been they've been central in building up a developer community, a tight knit developer community all over the Western states and the East Coast, and now internationally. It's definitely but, a culture, yeah. Uh, it's built up a unique um, compared to some of the other. Um, I shouldn't read Mark because I don't know, but I, it's only what other people have told me. It's a it's a very it's a very open community, very generous. 
you know, also the quality of some of the people is so high, isn't it, Bill? Um, it's also what I find fascinating is that it's um, where people uh, who are not enormously wealthy can really build businesses, effective businesses yep. through, um, through plug-in development, through agency work. Um, and, and some people become wealthy very fast all of a sudden. They hit it. They hit the right product, right plug well, in. They they can they're still pretty small businesses, Bill, right. compared, you know, but they Yeah, but they they uh, people have made a million dollars in a year with the right plug in. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's I mean, what from, yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from starving to a million dollars in their pocket. Yeah. And um that's what also interests me. But um this SAS has really What starving? This no <laughs> This SaaS I've built has taken up a lot of my time. And it's not only the coding and working with other developers, it's been working out all the all the other parts. Right. And and just working with the test partners. You know, Can you set, clarify for some of our listeners, SaaS, a software as a service. Yes. Um, and uh, this is really another exciting area for WordPress because, you know, Matt and the um, the way that JavaScript um, APIs are going to be handled, the RESTless uh, API that's going to be integrated in the core someday. Um, I, I'm sure in this year it will happen. It is a plugin um, that will enable um, WordPress to be even more flexible in the way it can it can work with external API systems. Um, um, so at the present moment, um, I, I, at the present moment, if you wanted to build a, a kind of true SaaS online product, a lot of people would either look, uh, they would look at Ruby on Rails. You know, it, it, it came from Thirty Nine Signals, who were a Chicago-based um, web-based digital agency that were based in Chicago, and they decided that they wanted to build some products and they built a couple of what the, the one that they're really famous for is Basecamp, which is a project management. Right. And they, um, one of their partners built a framework called um, rails, which are kind of elements of Ruby code. And it's just a framework that enables you to build web-based applications, database-driven applications on a, a much quicker um, schedule than having to build all this Ruby. So it, it's become enormously popular. And the other technology that, that's used in SAS are yeah. there's a new breed of kind of JavaScript frameworks a lot of them have come from the major Bay Area internet companies. There, um, there's a framework from Google. There's a couple of other frameworks from some of the other big players that are like it's JavaScript, but they've also produced frameworks. When, when you talk about frameworks, you're saying like WordPress is a framework in itself. Ruby on Rails is a framework. The word, unfortunately, Bill, the word framework has a lot of different right. meanings. It's a very broad term. But um, if you want to, if you're looking at technologies to rapidly build a SaaS product, um, I think now you can do some something similar in WordPress. It has got its limitations. I think there's a certain area where you there's some things that you you would be advised not to try them in WordPress. Most of what I'm attempting is forms of publishing of some type or another, which WordPress is ideal for. It's a it's a it's a uh, publishing platform. So what I'm attempting to do with it is quite um, suitable. Where I think some other kind of SaaS objectives really wordpress wouldn't probably be the most ideal um platform where you'd probably be better off looking at ruby on rails or looking at these javascript um frameworks bill you know but I, you know it's yeah. funny i just pulled up framework too and the, what i originally learned when in wordpress you talk about framework it comes up with genesis and mm. uh thesis and uh, canvas and 
uh, Ganty, Gant, Gantry, Gantry. Yeah, they, they're all. Um, they're, you know, we, yeah. we we've had some episodes about this and the reality bill, and um, it is a framework. But really, what really the own? If you really want, um, I've got nothing. I've got nothing against Chris, who um, who runs um, Thesis, uh, but really, I really I couldn't advise any any developer or anybody to go down the Thesis road. Um, I really love the two Brian's. Now Brian Clark's been on the show; he's a great guy, and the Studio Press and the Copy Blogger crew that work for him and that are all great people. Um, I've I've been trying to learn Genesis. I, I think. It's not exactly. I'm I'm really oscillating from it, um, but um, really, it it dealt with a fundamental problem about four years ago, and it really it it, it strength is it gets you away from theme forest and some of the nightmares that you can have with theme forest, but really, it's not exactly a framework. It's really a, a parent theme. Yeah, you know, I've, that's the way it sort of evolved. Now, the parent theme, the child theme, and, of course, you know, skins. And I do skins now, and I'm having a blast with skins. Well, I have tried to say, but you're using, um, I forgot. Dynamic. The, dynamic. That's that's called the parent. Uh, you got the the parent theme, which is Genesis. This is really the better way to say it. You've got WordPress as your framework and the big picture. You've got the parent theme, which is Genesis, and then you've yeah. got the... Uh, child theme, which is uh, dynamic, which there's different child themes, you know, but the child theme of dynamic, really it's, child theme is not a good word for dynamic. It's a child theme frame, a producer of skins. You can make skins and make real quick different layouts. You can save them. You own them. Then you can load them back up for people very fast. Yeah. yeah it's, um, a, it's, a, it's a way to create different kinds of, yeah. and I've created a, a podcast. I've created some other ones. Yeah, you, know, it, it, you know, you're not a beginner. You're, you're. Yeah, I think it's the first time you said that after two years. <laughs> well, you've been trying to, you know, to, uh, a lot of work. I have, I am trying to be fair here, Bill, yeah. you, you from a, a completely low base, yeah. But you're you are somebody that utilize technology for your real estate and yep. for your yep. for your design. Building. Yeah, civil engineering, engineering, right? Oh, you know, yeah. you come you you come from a technical Networking. background, yep. so you've always used computers. Yeah, for twenty years. Yeah. But you come back and you were using computers in the army, but they're very custom, very secure internals. Yeah, and, and it was all XP for the most part. They're seven now, and it's all yeah. uh, two, uh, the, the servers are like yeah. Five years behind. So you, you so you come back and the world's completely changed. Oh yeah, it's, it's completely different. Yeah, it's all web based. But yeah, um, it's very what difficult. I mean, but you you came back, but you did have a technical background. But you, you've had to learn, you know, all the marketing. You've had yeah. to learn Genesis. O- online marketing, not not On, re- yeah. yeah. You've had to learn a lot of stuff very rapidly, and that's one of the problems. There's a you know, yeah. and then you've trying to you know. But as a as a methodology to actually produce something that's reasonable, you actually chose the best yeah. um, platform that would allow you to rapidly develop something that was decent. Yeah, I'm really happy with it too, and it yeah. will have to stay. So, hey, Jonathan, yeah. we're running tight, so this is really yeah. important. Yeah, we're actually, we're going to go 30 minutes today. This is going to be a long one. What do you see over the horizon for you? What's what's your next step? You got your SaaS. You you really got ninety percent of your SaaS, ninety five percent, maybe even further than that. But I know it's going to develop and do other things. You're in the marketing side right now. You're in the hey, it's it's being tested. It's past the testing stage. You have clients now. Now you got to go out and sell it. So what are you doing now for the next six months? Well, I think you know um, the re- <clears throat> it's really it's really difficult, but. Um, fundamentally, um, I probably will keep on doing client work that comes my way if it's the right project, um, just for cash flow, basically. Um, I'm trying to develop um, maintenance, doing small maintenance and hosting packages for people that want a kind of boutique service in WordPress. Because I already do a lot, you know, a lot of the ex clients I'm hosting for them, and they, uh, I just kind of more formulated kind of case by case packaging, right. and I was looking, and it was it became a mess. I had different different service levels for different clients, 
and they were paying me all sorts of different amounts. And I, I've just I've just offered a two kind of service package for I, my old old clients, and now I'm offering it on WP Tonic because I, I, I've been doing that anyway. So and um, it, you know I'm not trying to be like WP Engine. I, I'm just offering a, a, a more hands boutique kind of service for you know a certain group of people right. that want, want to know who's doing it for them so i've developed that but i'm doing it anyway um and the problem the problem with the the you know taking a theme and heavily customizing it or taking a starter theme like bare bones and developing it for client is you're looking between six to seven thousand dollars, and on the smaller medium clients, you've got to supply all additional services like copywriting, advisory. There's a lot of phone calls. There's a lot, a lot of back and forth bill, and the average project in reality takes from three to five months. When it when they first approach you, you, you normally have a a few discussions that last for a month. They're normally looking at other people, so there's a there's a there's a time lag. So that normally takes a month, and then it takes a month to just to work out precisely what they're looking for, and then it takes about three months to actually produce it. Um, it yeah, so not takes- ninety days to really build that custom. Yeah, platform. Just- and, and there's different kind of platforms of cost. There's e-commerce. There's well, Retailers, I'm, restaurants. Yeah, I'm excluding e-commerce because that gets even. It tends to get even more. Um, so, um, what, you, what you end up? So you only need like two to three of those, and all your time is taken up. Yep. yep. You, all your time is taken up for fifteen thousand dollars for three. You know, for almost four or five months, yep. which is a living. You know, you can make a living from it, but you're not going to get wealthy from. You're not going to build anything from it. Right. And I, I didn't want to end up with an agency when I'm employing ten, twelve people because that's still a small business, but that's a substantial cash flow that you've got to find every month, and that's a norm as as the head of yeah, that. Absolutely, I, you know, I ran a business uh, prior to nine eleven. I had a design build construction company. And, yeah, and you got to keep the work coming in because that yeah, cash flow doesn't stop. So yeah, employees, well, so, are, employees are two-thirds of the cost. Yeah, so what I've got, I've got a couple of developers on retainers. Yeah. I, I have half their time. Yeah. Um, that, I, have two, I have two developers and I pay for half their time a month. And I have a graphic designer that I pay about uh, who's also on a retainer. And um, copy, We have a copywriter, a couple of them. I have a couple of copywriters yeah. in um, that. They're, 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 it's a they, new kind of business model. I like it. Um, but I'm I'm not got an enormous cat. You know, I've got my developers that and my co- and my um, graphic designer that are all. But it's, I'm not paying salary. I'm not paying somebody six forty to eighty thousand dollars, which you have got to really pay for a really really good WordPress developer. Um, you're looking between sixty and eighty thousand. Um, if they were a Ruby, that's the funny thing, Bill. If they were a Ruby on Rails developer, you, you'd be looking at one hundred and twenty to one hundred and thirty. Yeah, 000. plus your burden and taxes and all that. But you know that's what's great about this new new industry. It's coming online, the web. If you have a, a laptop and you're working out of your house, you, and you have a business license, you can you can be an independent contractor. You can get, you can get some if you get there's some really good programmers offshore. Yeah, you can contract them for so many hours a week, yeah. and pay them a retainer. Well, one and, one of my one of my contractors is offshore, and one is based in the US. So I have and um, I have a mixture of offshore and onshore, um, and it's and but they're on they all get a monthly retainer of some type, and they've been on a monthly retainer for about two years. So we built up a relay i'm not just going out and dealing with people that i've never dealt with i've got a small team that i know won't let me down at a cr- and yeah. i know what their quality of work is so i think that's i've built up a good model there yeah, and you keep on pushing it out more more SaaS, more products more you got the system down and i think that's really important 
And plus, I know how you found some of your people it's through those relationships that we you built and we built through the uh, the podcast, and, yeah. and and you really build a strong knit group of yeah. people across the country. So hey, I, ho- I hope to build up the maintenance because it's it's not committing me. See the like I was, what the point I was trying to make about the. Um, and for the right job, I, I actually looking for more the smaller two thousand, three thousand job because you, you, they, they are more quantified. They are more, you know, you you do you you give the proposal, given the deposit, and you get the job done. It's these these medium, and especially if you get above the if you get into the commas site and you start talking about ten fifteen thousand, that's they they can end up been six month jobs um so i'm looking for the smaller and, and the maintenance um the smaller jobs and which I, we've had some and they've been ideal and then i'm just looking to just keep on working on mail right and push that out and utilize utilize wordpress for the target industry which is real estate agents uh, and brokers and really i really can't see why anybody would look at at a a purpose enclosed system why they wouldn't look at open source framework like wordpress and then build value on top of that now are you talking about the companies or the real estate companies what specifically yeah, in general. Yeah. So it could be because, you know. WordPress is a good skill set to have, no matter who you are, whatever level. Yeah. It's a good and skill think, set to learn. Yeah. But well, I think I think the main thing, um, the technology is great, but what people, um, if you're a small to medium business, what you really got to work on is um, what, what your message is going to be on the site and what your niche is going to be and what your value proposition really is going to be. Well, Jonathan, we got to tie it up together. In closing, you've done some interesting things and you keep on going forward. I got to ask some unique question about you. We didn't find yeah. out this. What's your favorite food? Oh, it's got to be fish and chips. Oh, fish and chips. I love fish and chips too. Well, British fish and I chips. I like it there too. I like it. I like British fish and chips in the newspaper still. They still do it in the newspaper, I think. Yeah, the proper stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's hot. Bit- it's always hot. Yeah, oh, it's hot coming right uh, out of the oil. Last time I went back to England, I went down to Cornwall to Farmouth, yeah. and it actually the cod had actually. Oh, great! Like, it was actually local cod. Oh yeah, been, and it was done right, and the chips were big, and it all been fried fresh, and it was in the actual newspaper, and I ate it with, um, on the quay of Farmouth. It's really it was, hot. Yeah, it, it was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, I could see. You know what? And like you said, it's fresh. It's right out of the sea. You know, England's surrounded by the ocean. And it's yeah. boom. That's Cornwall, it. Cornwall's beautiful. The, and then, then we went to the pub and we had a couple oh, of Oh, the pubs are good too. We, oh. had a couple, we had a couple of beers to kind of finish. The oh, meet. that's a good way to start. You know, and, and the pub, how old was the pub? Uh, it was probably about 700 years. <laughs> I, was, I think the oldest, I've been in England a few times. The oldest pub was like 250, 300 years I was in. But I know some of them are really old. Yeah, there, there was a farmer. Farmer was still is a base for the British Navy. Yeah, it's it's much reduced than it used to be. But there there's been pubs there because of the Navy influence. Yeah, there's been bu- pub, pubs there for a long time. About five foot five or six foot ceiling, some places. Yeah, yeah. but there's yeah there's some really old because it was a major British six, naval seven, eight, yeah. port. And it's a it's a lovely it's a lovely um, part of the England Cornwall Devon. Well, that's good. Fish and chips and WordPress and, and having a good time. And beer. And beer. Hey, you know what? I don't know if should we talk about this finishing up. Yeah. You're here in Reno, and Reno's a lovely place, skiing, all those things. Oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. But, you know, I know that the technology, the really happening, is over the hill. You go to Sacramento, or yeah. you, go to, uh, you go over to uh, Denver. Denver's pretty tech-savvy with yeah, Boulder. Boulder up above. And then San Diego, of course, in the podcasting world is the big yeah. place. And you go to Houston. So are you planning on staying here? Well, um, tough I'll question. Be, I'll be two minds. You know, um, I'll probably know by the end of the summer. We can see we can still run the business, though. We do support each other, our businesses, and we do I do the marketing. 
And you can be anywhere and do what you're doing. It's just your clientele and your local base. Is the- yeah, it's just been disappointing. You know, there's some fantastic, don't get me wrong, Bill, there's some fantastic local business people. There's a couple PR agency. There's a local PR Very agency. Very good PR agency. Um, called the Abbey Group, um, run by Abbey. Um, she's, she's fantastic, and she's given me a lot of um, support. Um, there's other local business people that are on the board of, advisors for me for mail right that really helped a lot and there's been other people um but it it so it is great but um it has I, there's a lot of people that move here to retire and you know it it it's hard to get funding here it's hard to get um a lot of people retire here and they they they're not in they're not gonna be funding anything. They're looking just to save money. Um Well it's the connection it's the personal face to face connections. If you're in Silicon Valley, I, I mean I've I go over there for conferences, it takes about four hours. And I'm talking to people doing the same thing I'm doing. I said, You say Google is one of your clients? Wow. And it really is one of your clients. You know, whether it's motivational speaking, systems it's kind of weird what they do. They do I don't know what they teach it. Yeah. They they're doing uh, writing books, uh, teaching some they're, e-commerce they're, they're, systems. You know, we, uh, you know, I've tried. You know, um, there's people in the community arena that are actively trying to encourage a more auto, um, online entrepreneur yeah. kind of, you know, encouraging people to start do startups, give them counselling. There's a guy called Matt Westfield, right. who who runs uh, who. who done startups and he mm-hmm. runs a advisory for people thinking about and, there, there's a group of people that really try there's a place in reno called the adams hub there, there's uh, well, um, jonathan i we've got the meetup the entrepreneur meetup that you're uh, i'm the chairman of and you're on the board and that's 530 people but there's a I lot mean, so we, that's a lot of you, folks there's also the universe there, there's oh, a the lot university is great there's a lot of people trying, but what is needed, Bill, is it's is that it the, there's the need of the governor in Nevada, you know, to get serious about really trying to start to fund um, start tech startups, and he needs a, he needs to he needs to lead, and you know they've done this in they've done this in Colorado, they've done this in Utah. Um, that you need to put thirty million dollars a year into startups and have a proper startup fund, and you know it's a it's a small it's a it's a pretty large amount of money, but in in the budget of 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 the state it's small beer, but it would really encourage a lot of new business in southern and northern Nevada, Bill. Yep, that's that's true. But you know, again, if you if you want to really it, it, I'll finish up. This is a tough one, but we talked about this. And I'm staying in, in Reno. I mean, my kids, I got kids yeah. in high school. Reno High School is wonderful. The gymnastics is amazing. And, you know, we have, an, we may have the highest number of Olympic, Olympic Olympians in, in this area than anywhere else from skiing to even gymnastics. Uh, it's sort of a little secret how many, we'll just take it for granted how many Olympians train and work here between Tahoe and, and Reno because the altitude and the training and the coaches. That's a whole different game. And by from out, you name it, high, it, we've got everything here. But on technology and communications, if you want to start a business, I think, though I just talked to a guy, you're going to have a lot better chance over in Silicon Valley trying to get the cash. Yeah, so, well, and, and, my mind's a bootstrap, and I, I, I'm not actively, you know, um, it just depends. But we've had some really recently, some great conversations, Bill, yeah. and you've helped. And I, I think Mel Wright is going the right direction. You know, um, yeah. I think. No, I, I think, is. And you can travel. I travel down to Orange County all the time. Yeah. Which I might be there tomorrow. Yep. All right. But, um, <laughs> all right, Jonathan. But get, but get back to WordPress. Um, I think the future of WordPress, um, it's really, it, I think the crucial thing for the next two years, can it get more market share? Can it do that without becoming too overly complicated? Um, Or does it need to split up into something that is more complicated and then a base version that deals – that might be a good one. Yeah, I think 
WordPress, I think you're 100% right. You need a, a different, a simpler framework, I think, for the starter, at least, the beginner. Yeah. Um, I'm basic. not sure, you know, and obviously Matt was, you know, and it is the major um, profit center for automatic, which is um, WordPress.com. It gets it from WordPress.com. And, they, they, you know, and obviously they bought um, WooCommerce, Woo Themes for WooCommerce, because one of the reasons, because they want, to integrate that in WordPress.com and be able to offer e-commerce solution, but um, I also but I also feel that maybe WordPress.org needs to split into um, maybe two platforms. One that is more cut down, but that but maybe not because that that would that's the purpose yeah i think i think probably will what will happen bill is that wordpress.com is going to get a lot more sophisticated and uh, but still be the more easier solution yep. you know and the dot org will just have more functionality um compared to the other solutions you know i, I don't know too much about joomla most people now if they're not looking at wordpress they look at drupal um, and Drupal, it's great. Great for the right thing, but it is a very, very complicated platform. Bill. Well, I think that's a good way to finish up, Jonathan. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. You got the great advice at the end. Yeah, that's great, Bill. Go with WordPress. Go with WordPress. It's the, it's the path to go down, folks. It's the glorious path. All right, until next week. Next to you, this comes out late, sun, late Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, tune in. Thanks, folks.